Good evening. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica as we begin the Sacred Triduum with the Mass of the Last Supper. I'm Carmen Flores Mansi. I'm the Pastoral Director of Music, and I want to invite you to join in all of our sung and spoken prayer. Everything can be found in your worship aid. Let the church now stand, and together we sing, We Should Glory in the Cross.
En el nombre del Padre, y del Hijo, y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Mis hermanos y hermanas, la paz de Jesucristo esté siempre con ustedes. The Holy Spirit has poured out God's love on this community. God manifests his grace through the sacramental signs he has entrusted to his church. Through the use of these holy oils, which we blessed and consecrated last Thursday, may God's grace be poured forth always upon our church. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for your care that reaches from generation to generation. Blessed are you, Lord, for this holy oil that soothes the sick. You see what pains women and men, what troubles our minds and bodies. You command the church to stretch out a hand of comfort. With this oil, our touch becomes your touch, our healing hand, your will for wholeness and eternity. For this oil of grace, for the gifts of compassion and healing, we praise you and hold your name high. You are the one God, living and giving life forever and ever.
saving waters of baptism be strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for the new life you bring to the church. Blessed are you, Lord, for this holy oil that strengthens women and men for the journey of faith. Your wisdom brings even the smallest seed to full bloom. Your friendship helps all people seek one home. For this oil of grace, for the gifts of faith and companionship, we praise you and hold your name high. You are the one God living and giving life forever and ever. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord our God, for your strength and holiness. Blessed are you, Lord, for this oil that confirms the Spirit's presence. The Spirit is always at work, prompting us to do good, to proclaim your word. The Spirit binds us together strongly and boldly, so that even our weakness is no stumbling block to the coming of your kingdom. For this oil of grace, for the gifts of ministry and unity, we praise you and hold your name high. You are the one God living and giving life forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, one about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church the sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb. In proportion to the number of persons who partake of it, the lamb must be a year old male without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of e Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord 
as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos y hermanas, yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que les has tra transmitido, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que iba a ser entregado, tomó pan en sus manos y pronunciando la acción de gracias, lo partió y dijo, Esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mía. Lo mismo hizo con el cáliz después de cenar, diciendo, Este cáliz es la nueva alianza que se sea con mi sangre. Hagan esto en memoria mía siempre que beben de él. Por eso, cada vez que ustedes comen de este pan y beben de este cáliz, proclaman la muerte del Señor hasta que vuelva. Palabra de Dios. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments he took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, 
you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you ever, uh, when you're driving a car, have you ever driven with a backseat driver? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe a family member, a friend. You've got your right blinker on, and then they say, turn right up ahead. Think, oh, thanks a lot. There's a red light coming up. You better slow down. Oh, thanks a lot. It's kind of difficult sometimes, or maybe annoying. It's uh, somebody who needs to be in control, I suppose, or maybe they're nervous or just don't like the way you drive. But that whole concept of being in control, I think it's something that all of us in one way or another experience, that we want to be in control. We don't like the unknown. And I think this can, can prevent us sometimes from, from following the Lord because the Lord is uh, calling us sometimes to move beyond our comfort zone, sometimes calling us to follow him, to take up a cross, and we say, well, maybe, but where are you leading me? I need to know more first. Let's just take a look at Peter tonight in the gospel. Uh, we are very familiar with this. I suppose you could even say that Peter was being polite or respectful. He was saying, well, Lord, you're the Lord. You're the rabbi. You're the teacher. I should be washing your feet, not you mine. But there's more to it than that, I think. I think Peter strikes me as somebody... Uh, who needed to be in control. He was somebody who thought he knew things, and he was having a hard time letting go and letting Christ. He says to the Lord, no way, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus says, you may not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. What Jesus is saying is politely to him, Peter you don't know. You're not in control. We, you and I, are on a pilgrimage of faith, particularly now in this triduum, tonight, tomorrow, Good Friday, and then the Easter vigil and Easter morning. And so we are entering into a moment of faith, a Passover. 
And we're not in control. Jesus is. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Tonight, our Mass, the Mass of the Lord's Last Supper, is couched in a framework of this journey, this Passover. We heard about the Israelites in that reading today, tonight, how the, the angel would pass over. He would give life to those with the mark on the lintel posts. And so, like the Israelites, we're on a journey of faith, moving through this triduum, these celebrations which are so rich with grace. We're embracing the already and the not yet. Jesus, of course, has already risen from the dead. That's what we celebrate every Eucharist. But liturgically, we go through this, this, this Passover, this journey again, that we might take out of it the riches and the graces that God means for us. It's also a journey that's uh, very uh, much couched in the night. Nighttime was when the Israelites waited for their exodus to begin, their journey of freedom to begin. The sages of the Old Testament will explain that the Israelites' deliverance came at night. And St. Luke tells us that the Lord will return unexpectedly at night, marking the Christian Passover. And John of the Cross, St. John of the Cross, has a lot of weight that he puts on the night. He talks about the dark night of the soul. He talks about la noche oscura, that blessed night when I go from my bed to rush down the stairs to follow the call of Christ. Through the night, God gathers together all the strength, all the possibilities, all the longings of the soul so that this total, total harmony can commit its strength and power to his love. That tranquil night, at one with the rising dawn, the silence of music, the mighty sound of solitude, the feast where love makes all things new. So this is a holy night, this night of the Passover, this night of the Last Supper. It's important for us, I think, to reflect on Psalm 37, to give us some clues as how to enter into this night and this journey of faith where we lose control and place ourselves in the hands of Christ. Psalm 37 says, Surrender to God, and he will do everything for you. Uh, this is what Peter is learning tonight. This is what we are learning tonight. I often make reference to that child's game, you know, when you uh, take your friend's foot and you hold the foot. I'm not recommending you do this, children. It may not. <laughs> Don't do this at home. But we did it when we were kids. We did a lot of things when we were kids we shouldn't have done, I guess. We didn't have helmets or seatbelts or anything like that. But when you hold somebody's foot, you've got control of them. You know what that's like. You know, you, you, they're in, you're in, that person's in control. Well, think of that tonight with Jesus. Jesus is taking the foot of Peter. Jesus is in control. And he's saying, Peter, surrender to me. Surrender your, your control to me. I'll take over. This is an act of faith and humility for Peter to know his true place and trusting that Jesus will do all for him. Another thing Psalm 37 tells us is wait for the Lord to lead and then follow in his way. And so tonight is exemplary. The Lord is leading. He's showing us. He's exemplifying for us what it is to be a Christian. It means we're to give, we're to serve, we're to wash each other's feet. It's all done. Jesus does everything for us. Notice in that reading, the second reading, this is my body that is given for you. This is my blood that is shed for you. All for the other, all for love, for Abba, his Father, and for one another. This Holy Thursday, we're called to be caught up in the cross because for John, washing of the feet and the Eucharist are the same. In John's Gospel, there is no narrative, the, the Eucharistic narrative. It's the washing of the feet. This is the, the transitus domini, the giving over, the Christ dying on the cross, offering his body and blood for us and giving his all. Notice a few days ago, we heard about Mary washing the feet of Jesus. She broke open that alabaster jar. She gave everything. Once you break it open, you have to use it all. And then Judas said, that, that's worth a whole year's salary. Mary's giving everything to Jesus, not just a day's salary or a week's salary or a month's salary, everything. 
We're called to do everything. Jesus gave everything for us. And finally, in Psalm 37, we learn to do God's will because the Lord will strengthen us if we obey him. So Jesus not only shows us what to do, how to wash each other's feet, but through the Eucharist, he gives us the grace to do it. He gives us the grace to let our ego subside, to decrease, as John the Baptist said, so that Jesus might increase. Tonight, we're called to participate as a community. We're told to be one in Christ. The Eucharistic feast is a, is a unifying feast. One bread, though many grains. One cup of wine, though many grapes. Tonight, you and I are called to place our feet into the hands of Christ. There is much we don't know yet. The journey is long. But we know that Jesus will be with us throughout. I love that poem, that excerpt from the poem of Cardinal Newman. Lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom. Lead thou me on. The night is dark. I'm far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see this distant scene. One step enough for me. I think C.S. Lewis got it right. Christ is not asking us to think less of ourselves, but rather to think of ourselves less. As I'm sure you know, saying yes to that call of Jesus to wash each other's feet will lead to the cross. But the cross always leads to Easter, and that's what these next few days are all about. This night, this Passover, this night we begin this Triduum journey. We're invited to take that step into Christ's passion, death, and resurrection by putting our feet into the hands of Christ, now and forever.
Please stand. As we enter into the Passover of the Lord, let us intercede before God on behalf of all in the name of Jesus, our teacher and Lord. the world God loved so much that he gave his only son. May God execute judgment on the false gods of power and greed. We pray to the Lord. For those enslaved by drug addictions, or by forces within. May they find freedom in Christ's love and support from Christ's disciples. We pray to the Lord. For those about to be baptized into Christ's Paschal Mystery, May their wish washing in those saving waters give them a full share with Christ. We pray to the Lord. For those whose works of charity in this community fulfill Christ's example of humility and service. May Christ's gift of the Eucharist sustain their gift of love for others. We pray to the Lord. For those ordained to preside at the altar of Christ's sacrifice and supper, May they be an inspiration to those seeking a vocation to the priesthood or to religious life. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered in remembrance of Christ to proclaim his death until he comes, May we imitate God's love for his own, as we reach out to our Protestant brothers and sisters, creating a bond of unity. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all of those who are making a pilgrimage of faith to Chimayo tomorrow, that their prayers will be efficacious for all of us in the Archdiocese of Santa Fe. We pray to the Lord. Father, help us derive the true Christian spirit from our unified praise of you during this Mass, so that we may be ready to serve others in the spirit of sacrificial love, a favor we ask through Christ our Lord.
Almighty Father, grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice. 
and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis, St. Clare, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the same peace, then, of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace of Christ.
And behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. And only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity and never forget his new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. We ask this through Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And now I would like to address all of my brothers and sisters who are about to journey to Chimayo. Could you raise your hands just for a second so we can see who you might be? Wonderful, throughout the congregation. Brothers and sisters, we should remind ourselves of the reasons for our resolve to go on this holy pilgrimage. The place you intend to visit is a monument to the devotion of the people of God. They have gone there in great numbers to be strengthened in the Christian way of life and to become more determined to devote themselves to the works of charity. And as our choir so beautifully sang, to remind us of the new commandment to love one another as Christ has first loved us. Let us bring our example of faith, hope, and love to this sacred place, and we will be enriched by the help we give each other. So I ask you all now here to join with me in blessing our pilgrims who will be on this journey, that God will keep them safe, and that this will be a moment of great spiritual depth and growth for them all and for us all. All powerful God, you always show mercy toward those who love you, and you are never far away for those who seek you. Remain with your servants on this holy pilgrimage and guide their way in accord with your will. Shelter them with your protection by day. Give them the light of your grace by night. And as their companion on the journey, bring them to their destination in safety. We ask this through Christ our Lord. <laughs> 